Hello gentle viewers, this is our Guardian welcoming you back to Out of the Park Baseball 22 with the Pittsburgh Pirates. Um, before we get started today, I had promised a specific discussion about how to build a 40-man roster several episodes ago, and well, I forgot. Whoops. So I'm going to go ahead and talk about that now. Um, as kind of a nice little prelude before we get into the actual game today. So, depending on your specific setup, you're going to have a 40-man 40 40 roster. In order for a player to compete in the majors, he has to be on the 40-man roster. Pretty simple, I think. Um, so the question is, how do you actually build it in such, in such ways to get the most out of your team? Now, before we go any farther, the most important part of the 40-man roster is, of course, the active roster. So what do you need in an active roster? At a bare minimum, you need 13 players if you're in the National League. You need eight position players, first, second, third, short, left, right, and center field, and a catcher. And you need five starting pitchers. So that's 13 spots that have to be used on your 40-man roster for the very best combination of those 13 players. You're going to need some quantity of relievers, uh, anywhere from, in the modern game, and all my tips are gonna be about the modern game, of course, things change quite a bit if you go back historically, I would be very hard pressed not to have at least seven relievers. And I know I've discussed this before, but for me, the seven relievers you desperately need, you need a long man, a six starter, in case someone gets hurt. You need a closer, and you need a lefty killer. And then the other four relievers, assuming you pick seven, you can use any way you like. Um, so then the question is, so then that would get you up to 20 of your 26 players which leaves you with six position players or pitchers or whatever else you want to work that. Right now, the current Pirates actually have 13 pitchers. Um, but that's because I like having extra arms in the bullpen. So, now if you're playing an American League team or if the DH is enabled, you do have to add a DH as well, which would bump up your, your bare minimum to 14. But we're talking 20 to 21 players already set, which means half of your 40 man is already done. Next, you need backups of the different offensive positions. You must have a second catcher. It is not optional, it is mandatory. Um, you definitely need a second catcher. So what else do you need? You, de you ideally want players to fill certain holes on your roster. If you have a player who really struggles hitting, let's say left-handed pitching, you might need a platooner. Platooners aren't ideal because the best solution to your problem, of course, would just be having one player who's great at everything. But sometimes you can't do that. That may not be an option for you. That's one thing that you need. You also want backups at the major positions now one of the friends of the channel made a really great comment saying that as we have it set up right now, Mike Sheehan is backing up four different positions. And that means that because everyone's gonna fatigue at more or less the same rate, we're gonna find ourselves a bit short if he's the only primary backup for several positions. So what we're gonna do is quite simple. We're gonna put Hurd as backup at center field and we're gonna make um, maybe Danny Lesbron can play a bit of first base as a way to take that responsibility away from him. That'll help there. And the same thing here. Although Lesbron is already playing. Uh, we could have Paredes back up at first there if we needed to. Uh, but we're not going to leave Sheehan out. We just don't want him to be the primary backup for all these positions. He can be the tertiary backup, though. 
um, at a couple other positions there. There we go. So, at a bare minimum, you're going to want two backup infielders and two backup outfielders. Depending on your setup, you may want more or less, but that's kind of your bare minimum. You need someone who can back up at the main middle infield positions. You really don't need to rest for a spaceman all that frequently. Um, not compared to other positions. Um... So you can be a little bit more aggressive with your first baseman if you feel the need, but you definitely need backups at second, third, and short. You're also going to need at least one and probably two backup outfielders. Again, for injuries, or in our case, Ramon Ramirez, just he can't deal with left-handed pitching, so we need someone to help him out there. So your main roster is going to have 26 players on it, at least in this version of the game. So what do you do with the other 14 spots? One of the problems that I often have, and you can tell that right now by Mr. Bobby Gerber, is I tend to put people on the 40-man too early. Once you put a player on the 40-man roster, they start counting against your, uh, your salary. Of course, in real life, minor leaguers earn money too, but they don't earn very much. They definitely should earn more. That's without saying. Um, but for game purposes, minor leaguers don't cost you anything unless they're on the 40 man. So the real question, who else you put on your 40 man, it shouldn't come down to positions. It should come down to who is going to be Rule 5 eligible, which you can tell by this little uh, hash mark here next to Nate Wilcox's name, for instance. That's who you put on the 40-man. People who otherwise would lose in the Rule 5 draft or players that need to go up to the main roster. You'll find yourself filling the roster pretty easily, and you generally won't have to work too hard to find people to add to it. So that's how you build a 40-man. You should never get in the idea that you have to have X number of players on the 40-man because chances are um, you're going to have plenty of players you can swap in and out as you need to. Your most important task is to build the strongest possible minor league system. And then as time progresses, you can swap people in and out. Um, I do definitely want to keep Nate Wilcox, though, because he is a left-handed pitcher. And I don't have very many of those. So we're definitely going to want to put him on the 40-man sooner rather than later. I'm not going to do it right now because I don't have to start paying for him. Um, but that's definitely a thing that we'll need to consider. I have so much money right now in freaking extensions. And I don't know how I'm going to spend it yet. Bring back Gunnels, maybe... Probably not. We'll think about it. Um, yeah, so that is what I wanted to discuss briefly. I hope that helps. If you have any specific questions about how to build a 40-man roster, please let me know. What really matters, especially with the Major League game, is building a strong minor league system. And then you'll find yourself with the players you need um, or prospects that you can trade. Because um, if we look at our team right now, let's let's do a quick rundown, right? Say looks Brown, trade. But how did we get him? Because we traded people like Josh Gadia, who we had actually drafted. So again, strong draft means good player. Andre Sevilla. International free agent. Garrett Gunnels, we drafted him. Nick Rosario, we traded for him, but who do we trade to get him? Someone we drafted, and Ramon Gonzalez, and somebody that we got super cheap from free agency. Because if we look here, drafted. So strong drafts are what build strong teams. Ricky Peral was international free. Oh no, he's a scouting discovery, even better. Ramon Ramirez, rule five, trade, free agent signing. 
Um, our entire staff right now came from trades other than um, Kennedy, who we did draft. And our bullpen is cobbled together from various places. So yeah, the important thing to do is build prospects. And in Major League Baseball, don't fall into the trap of drafting a player that you need right away. Unless it's a reliever or the odd starter, they're not going to be ready right away. You need to let them have time to develop, and that means you want to find the best player available or someone that's an organizational weakness. So we take a look at our reports and info. We look at our positional rankings here. Our organization is kind of trash tier when it comes to most infielders. So that's something we're going to want to address in the draft sooner rather than later. All right, friendos, let us go ahead and see if we can return to the playoffs. And next month. Oh, someone recommended giving like micro-ranging Swedes initial starts. If I were playing the game myself in my spare time, I would do it. But really, I can't be bothered right now. So, if that cost me, it cost me. It wouldn't be the first time a dumb decision had cost me. But I think everything will turn out all right in the end. We're really not sure when Jesus Jimenez is going to come back. That's whatever. I'm not really going to weep for that. Hmm. Nope. Mm -mm. Yeah, this is just a bad deal. Like, there is no good version of this deal. I don't mind getting younger, but yikes. Hey, look, JJ Matos got hurt again. He started one game and got hurt. Oh dear. Oh dear. Okay. Well, we did lose Leah Mill Poindexter for eight weeks. Um, but that's okay. We've got loads of good relievers just waiting for an opportunity. And Mike Brunmeyer, it is your opportunity. There you go. Another great lefty, by the way. Definitely something that we can consider. So how are we doing after one month of the baseball play? Oh, let's take a look here, definitely. Uh, Swee looks a little bit better. Kennedy's about the same. Brooks is a tiny bit worse. Avila is getting better. A tiny bit worse. Better defensively, but definitely off to a bit of a cold start. Okay. Um, so, Ricky Peral is having a really rough time of it in the early season here. Um, definitely not enough to, say, punish him or anything like that, but it is a concern that his initial couple hundred of at-bats haven't been very good. On the flip side, Ramon Ramirez looks like a stud. Um, I don't know that we can trust this. I especially don't know if we can trust him hitting 280 for the whole season, but I'm not going to question it. Pretty good offense, uh, for the top seven, a top six. Ruray doesn't have to be an amazing hitter in order to get up to being worthwhile, so we can just kind of sit tight with him. Same with Mason Wynn. Pitching staff looks okay. How are you doing, Mr. Swee? Uh, you basically are at five 
uh, five innings to start right now. Um, that's fine for now, and hopefully you'll build up some stamina over the course of the season. Bullpen looks okay. Uh, Dane Vasquez has success, but has lost two games. Mostly home runs are his issue. We're going to have to keep a close eye on that and see if he can figure that out. Uh, Eric Martin is off to an okay start. Maybe not a brilliant one. Steve Critch is really struggling. Now the question is, of course, are you being brought into face righties and are they just destroying you? Or are you actually struggling against what your actual job is? You're getting lit up by righties. Um, and you have to pitch sometimes. I can't completely eliminate that. But you're also getting lit up by lefties. Uh, we're definitely going to keep a close eye on you as well. Because I actually have other options for the first time in a while. So if you don't get your shit together, my dude, um, you're going to get replaced. Um, before we continue the Gunnels question, do we bring him back? Man, that's a really hard question, isn't it? He's been so bloody good for us for so bloody long. He's the heart and soul of our team. But the man also justifiably wants to get paid. And he wants to get paid a lot. We could afford this, but the question is, is it a good risk? And I'm not convinced that it is a great risk. I am not at all convinced that $30 million for Garrett Gunnels is what's best for this team. I mean... Absolute worst case scenario, we offer qual Gunnels a qualifying offer. And we get a draft pick for him. And as we get closer into the season, we can maybe think about an extension. But for right now, we're just going to keep on keeping on. And we're going to see how things turn out in the second month of the season. A trade proposal. People want Bobby Sobolewski. And when Maldonado isn't terrible, but Chris Creeman is. Eh, no. I need my starting pitching depth in the minors in case things go wrong. Who has 1,500 career wins? Me? Um, okay. We did lose Ben Sweet. He's got a hamstring strain. He's going to miss six weeks. That's not ideal, obviously, but you know what? I, I was given a suggestion and I chose not to take it, so maybe this is me being punished for that. Uh, Vince Neely, I don't trust you as a starter. I think you're best suited as a reliever. So, who gets the starting pitching spot while Swee recovers? I think it's Soboleski. And Urbina... You're going to get the chance to actually fill the rotation spot, and then Sobolevsky is going to do emergency long relief, emergency starter, and long relief. Um, all right, let's keep going.
we can get Jesus Jimenez back, which would be amazing news if I actually wanted him anymore, which I don't. Uh, I'm going to try to shop him and see if I can get a decent prospect for him. Nope. What if I eat 50% of his contract? What if I eat his entire contract? Now I'm getting some offers. They're not great offers, but they're better than keeping Jimenez. I'll take, ooh. Okay, you're a really good defensive shortstop. That's incredibly valuable. I will trade for you. And then that solves that problem. Okay, uh, let's do team home screen, and we're not quite at the end of the month, so we'll just zip forward a bit farther. Well, let's add horse out four to five months, and I guess you could pronounce it like hearse if you wanted to because of the umlaut, but that's pretty funny to me. Okay. Vasquez is slipping a bit. We might need to replace him. Different things are happening here. I don't like Eldridge losing movement, but I still think he's the right player at the right time. Salix Brown is getting a bit better. Ramon Ramirez is really picking up contact. Garrett Gunnels is aging, as we all do. Any big changes here? Joe Meath is throwing harder. That's good news. Okay. Uh, read all. Oh, of course he is. Danny, my boy. So Ricky Peral is still struggling to hit for contact. And that's not a part of his game you should be struggling with. Um, we definitely need to see him start to heat up a bit. Because we have a lot invested in him to be successful. Uh, so that could be better. Ramon Ramirez has cooled off a bit, but is still proving to be a very solid option for us. I mean, Andre Sevilla hitting almost four fucking hundred is a pretty big here for all the rest of the team's ills. That's pretty incredible. Rosero's having another outstanding season. Not quite as good as last season. But still excellent. I'm not at all displeased with that. Pitching-wise, I think you need to shuffle the bullpen around a bit. I think the starters are okay, though. I don't really feel the need to replace any of them. Um, but the bullpen definitely needs to be reshuffled. Um, I would make Sedano the closer, but he's clearly injured. Uh, I will go ahead and make Carl Brown set up. And we'll shift Eric Martin down a bit. Because <clears throat> Mr. Martin here is, he's got good peripherals. He's just getting clobbered. So we're just going to like reduce his role a bit and see if he can improve for us. Um, so Daniel, if you're not injured for too long, I'm going to make you the new closer. 
Because Vasquez's home run tendencies are very dis- disconcerting. And we might need to downgrade his role a bit. Uh, Mr. Vasquez, I'm going to go ahead and make you ninth or later. Maybe if we have you pick a few, some fewer innings, you'll be in a little bit better shape. And then we'll see how the rest of this all works out. Steve Critch, if you can't get lefties out, I have no reason to have you on the roster. So you're on very thin ice, my friend. Very thin ice. Get your shit together. <clears throat> and then lineup-wise, I could swap Peral and Ramirez. And I think I will. Let's maybe take some of the pressure off of Peral. Danny Lesbron is having a pretty fantastic uh, season, too. All right. So here's my million dollar question. Literally. Do we bring back Gunnel? And if so, how much do we pay him? Is there anybody whose contract I could lock up for relatively cheap? That's not that cheap. I think a one, two, or three year deal with some team options would be reasonable for Gunnels. I would do that much. But I think any kind of deal that gives him four or five guaranteed years is going to bite us in the ass. Like, I think he's going to age phenomenally. Because he's got that great ability to, to draw walks means he's always going to be valuable. You want four guaranteed years. I can't give you four guaranteed years. If you took this deal, I would be happy with that. Hmm. He really doesn't want to give me a team option. That's his problem. He doesn't want to give me any team options. I will talk to you again as we get closer to the end of the season. Um, hmm. that's not a bad deal at all. So let's 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 examine Salix Brown. He's been durable. He gets on base. He plays second base at not the highest of levels, but a pretty high level. I really don't see a downside to giving him a new contract and buying us a bit of cost certainty down the line. And it's going to save us money in the short term. It's got plenty of protection. I think he's worth it. I genuinely think it is worthwhile giving him this contract. I'm going to do it. Done. Offer submitted. Um, the 
There's a temptation to lock up one of the big three, Peral, Rosario, or... Um, What's-his-face? Uh, Avila. I don't think any of them are going to give me a discount, though. I think all of them want to get paid lots and lots of money. So that's not a great risk. Um, who could we lock up and get a decent saving on? Nate Brooks, maybe. I don't know yet, friends. I think maybe our best strategy is just to keep going for a bit longer and then make some other contract decisions. Um, all right, let's do that. Oh, Danny. One of these seasons, you won't get hurt, but this is not that season. Uh, Chris Eastead, welcome back. You're going to be a middle reliever. Um, Okay, we did get Salix Brown back. That's excellent news. The fans are really happy about it. And I'm pretty happy about it too. He's a good player, and I have absolutely no problems whatsoever with keeping him. Uh, who got a torn labrum? Uh, I mean, if it's... Don't fucking hurt Brunmeyer. Seriously? Game, leave my damn relievers alone. Um, I am not going to uh, make any changes, other changes, because I want Swee to get his spot back. How is everybody tired all the time? Like, you're all constantly tired. Am I just running into a bunch of extra inning games? How is every single pitcher always tired? I gotta get Dane Vasquez out of the closer's role, but I don't know who to put there instead is the problem. Because Vasquez can't stop giving up homers, and that's going to cripple us. Um, well, I'm going to call up J.R. Myers for right now, and I'm going to make him a middle reliever. Uh, Sean Sosby, you're a pretty incredible pitcher. I'm going to ship you into being the closer. And you are going to be demoted to a regular middle reliever. Setup is going to be... I guess Vasquez can still be set up because somebody's got to do it, but I'm not happy about it. And let's see how long Brunmeyer is out. He's out for the entire season because of fucking course he is. It's because every single reliever is tired all the time. Uh, Nate Wilcox, you're getting called up, my dude. And you're going to be middle relief backup specialist. How are you all constantly tired? OK, 
Okay, we get our boy, Ben Sui back. Sobolevsky, you're getting your butt hammered again. Uh, you get your rotation spot back. And Urbina's gonna get Kennedy's. Kennedy, you're gonna shift and being emergency starter or long relief. Uh, is this just a matter of our starters not staying in games for very long? Like, I don't get why... You know what, let's, let's do this a bit. Let's stretch out our relievers a bit more than we have been. And let's ease off on the hook there. Let's try to make it so that every freaking um, pitcher isn't always tired. Ooh, five hits for Rure. Very nice. That brings him up to 256. Uh, who are my prospects? Do I have any? Julio Marez is the only one that made the prospect all-star team. All-star roster. Avila made it because of course he did. Rosario made it. Gunnels made it. Three all-stars, two of them starters. Not too shabby. A little disappointed Salix Brown isn't getting in the conversation for All-Stars. Because he's a really good player. I just think he doesn't have some of the sexy numbers. Uh, Peral is still really badly struggling. Um, really badly. I'm not going to bench him. But, okay, you've always struggled against left-handed pitching. Is that your problem? No, because you're not hitting against righties either. You're just not hitting. It doesn't matter where you are. We're already 49 and 25, right? It's not like him playing in the majors is hurting us. Unless Nate Hurd was absolutely crushing it, and I'm pretty sure he's not. He is not. I'm, I'm willing to let Parole figure it out. And we can just let the rest of the lineup pull some of the weight for him. Okay, we get Poindexter back, which is excellent news, because uh, he's actually a really good pitcher. Although he was struggling a bit in the majors, let's send him to AAA, and let's see if he can... Oh, he's got to be on the 40 man. Uh, my dude, let's go ahead and let you rehab in the minors. Now look, immediately, there's a lot less yellow happening, and that's very good news. Uh, hopefully people won't be quite so tired. Avila's not a bad catcher. Which I find kind of surprising, to be honest with you. Uh, let's talk contracts for people. We have an ecstatic group of people here. Um, I don't mind bringing back Sergio Joyce. I don't really rate assistant GMs all that highly. Chris Hannock. I'm gonna, ha I'm happily gonna let you stay as bench coach because the only person I call we here in Madison is just not as good as you are. Welcome back, Hannock. Ray King. I mean, Atsushi Mi Miyazaki is an amazing pitching coach, too. 
but you're even better. So I'm definitely going to bring you back as well. We're going to lock up this coaching staff. Colby Bird. You're a really good coach in your own right. And you might get promoted to bench coach if, like, let's say, Hannock retired before you did for some reason. But I'm going to keep you too. And let's just keep all the minor leaguers that we can for now and just let them all get another year of experience. Um, okay. I think there'd be a little bit of flavor if when a player retires, you can ask them to become a coach like they do in the real majors. I think that'd be kind of fun. I just kind of get tired of messing with the coaching each year when I don't think there's always a great deal of influence that the average coach has. Um, I'm also really trying to put off the Gunnels decision because, boy, do I not want to make it. International free agent signing decision I do want to make, however. Uh, of course he is. Been sweet, keeps getting better. That's good news. Andres Avila's getting better. Rosario's getting better. Sheehan's getting better. Peral's getting worse. Uh, yikes. Okay, Esteban Salas, let's talk about you for a minute. You're an explosive outfielder that would definitely look good in this lineup. But only one outfield position is going to be open in the near future, which is going to be right field potentially. And if I bring back Gunnels, you don't even have that waiting for you. War's slightly tired. We better get you some help. Yeah, Peral, I don't know what to do about you. I don't know what to do. You're at 50 contact. How on earth is Ramon Ramirez hitting 260 with 34 contact? And you're hitting 211 with 50. I think you're just having bad luck. And I might need to start platooning you. Um, because you really can't hit lefties at all. But the thing is, I would platoon you more if you're, like, destroying right-handed pitching, which you're not. You're hitting it better. Only one of your 11 homers has been there. You're just not playing that often. But, yeah, I definitely need to see you start hitting better, Mr. Peral. Um, a lot is riding on you. Um, Okay. International free agents. Hello, Jose Estrada. You look real good. I'd like you to be a third base prospect. I think you're really swell. Done. Um, okay. Mm. 
you won't give me that damn team option. That's what I find most infuriating. If you just give me a three-year deal with two team options, I would sign you right now. <clears throat> but I don't blame him. I don't blame him for the tact he's taking. If I were... What are you talking about? I can't give you a better fucking deal. I'm giving you five million. Because you're a dick. Ah, uh, dude. I'm gonna go for Victor Rubio then, if I can't have the guy I actually wanted. You just like me then more because you're a jerk. Uh, Franklin Gardano, fine. Or Garduno, rather. How do people not want to come to the Pirates, given that I've developed three international prospects into being superstars? Maybe not superstars, but... You suck, Estrada. I hope you have a bad career. Okay, there goes Tim Kennedy. So that's going to be a trip right back to the majors for Sobolevsky. I mean, it could be Poindexter if Poindexter were a little bit better. But no, I think it's got to be Sobolevsky. Because if I need an emergency starter, I just trust him more. Because you're a dick. How does how did nobody want to sign with Pittsburgh? I offered you all max deals and you went elsewhere. I hate you all. Uh, I really hate you all. Man, all right. Five hits. Oh, it's a different Avila. It's not my Avila. All right, draft time. Um, we're just gonna take best player available. I'm not gonna worry about what position or anything. Look, we definitely need middle infield help. It's just going to come down to who's available, though. Oh, excuse me. Eh. Meh. You're a reliever, dude. You're not a starter. You might be a starter if you ever picked up a third pitch, but right now you're a reliever. You're much closer to being an actual starter. I mean, there's a lot to be said for taking one of these top-tier relievers and hoping they develop quickly. Like, a guy like Eric Corrigan would certainly look nice in our bullpen. As would Bill Ruiz. I think I like Corrigan a little bit better, both because he's a little bit farther along and because he's got a really good combo. Whereas Ruiz is a bit more raw. I think I will drop Corrigan. Unless Jamie Chiquillo is really exceptional, which he's not. Oh, I get a supplemental round draft, don't I? Okay. 
Chris Merrill, I really like you. I know you're a long ways away from the majors, but you've got a great glove, even if it's not ideal, and that's going to play. So Chris Merrill, I would like you to join us in Pittsburgh, please. Jared Gilbert has big time power potentially. He's kind of raw, but he's raw is fine. I don't mind raw prospects. Uh, Nate Moore keeps falling. I don't really see why. I think a third round pick for him is more than reasonable. Done. Um. Nope, you're not a good enough athlete, and you're an even worse athlete. A guy like Curry would actually make a pretty decent third baseman, so I'm going to go ahead and, and take him. Where his lack of range won't hurt him as much. Um... Let's take Joe White. I think he seems like a good choice. Oh, it's on my pick, sorry. Nobody take Joe White. Damn it, they took Joe White. I like Jim Stovall. Uh, I'm going to take a shot on him. And done. And then let's start looking for secret megastars. Hi, Josh Stone. Why on earth are you even being considered as a pitcher? Like, I know you don't have much beyond contact, but you're actually a pretty good infielder. I'm going to go ahead and take Josh Stone, and we'll just convert him to being a hitter. And then I will take Jake Patterson, because uh, he looks like he could be quite good. Any big thumpers? Yeah, we can take a flyer on Joe Jones. Eh, you say it's impossible. I bet I could sign you. I think I'm just going to finish the draft at this point. This is definitely a draft. That's not going to have any big contributors anytime soon, but it could really start to pay real dividends in a couple of seasons, I think. Um, we've definitely helped restock our middle infielders, and there's a couple of really intriguing players who are just a couple of steps away from being really strong. Uh-huh. Joe Jones would like a fair bit of cash. How much? He wants more than six million. I'm not going to pay him that much. He's not that good. Let's him up to the training deadline now. We can get Danny Sedano back, which is wonderful news. I do like me some Danny Sedano. Um, Mr. Sedano, I am going to ask you to... Yeah, I'm getting rid of Steve Critch. You're more like Steve Crutch right now. I will happily take an Alex Zerpa, even if he never works out, because you're just not very good. And then I will go ahead and activate Sedano, and then I'm going to shift you, Mr. Wilcox, into being a lefty specialist first, and then a middle reliever second. 
Denny Sedania, you're going in at setup, and Eric Mar and Dane Vasquez, you're down to middle reliever, and you're gonna be a void high leverage. You're just getting pasted, dude. I don't know what happened to you this year where you think that home runs are a good thing to give up, but you need to stop it. You need to stop it right the hell now. Um Sosby is fine. He's not exceptional, but he's fine. Oh, you definitely should not be an emergency starter anymore. That's not going to happen. You know what? Screw it. Sedeno, I'm going to make you the closer. And we're going to see how you do. That all looks good. I really want an extension too, Gunnels, but you're being unrealistic right now. Two years. No, you want that four-year deal. And your price keeps going up. I'll tell you what, let's do this. If you'll let me take out some of the salary in these second two seasons, I think I can live with this. Or three years? Look, three years and we do it like this. No. Here's the problem. I don't begrudge him what he's looking for. He wants security. I get that. But the fact I'm not getting... First of all, it's a no-trade clause. And second of all, the fact that I can't even get a team option out of him. He's already kind of pissed at me. We're gonna. I'm going to talk to him again in the offseason. I want to bring you back, dude, but you're making it really, really hard to bring you back. Let's advance to the trading deadline and figure out if we want to trade anybody. Okay, Leah Mill Poindexter, I actually had forgotten about you. Was it intentional, my dude? I just legitimately forgot about you. Do you have options, my friend? Oh, I have to keep you on the roster, don't I? No, I don't. I can put you on the 40 man and then leave you in the minors. Oh, no, I can't. I forgot about that. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and demote Myers for just a second. Call up Poindexter and I'm going to send Poindexter right back down. No, he doesn't. Oh, he does. He definitely does. Uh, if that's the case, I'm going to leave Myers up because he's pitching a lot better than he said. All right. And then both of you are going to do middle relief. And we'll see how that works out for us. Trading deadline. Three hundred homers for AJ Gracia. Good for him. Um. Okay. What could we trade for to improve our team right now? That's a really good question. I mean, I'm getting to the point where Ricky Peral might go to the minors if I can get a good center fielder that I can trust for the rest of the season. 
Because he is not right. I don't know what his problem is. He is not right. And... I don't think we can make the plows with him in center field. I think we'll make the plows no matter what. I misspoke, but... I am not enthusiastic about our chances with him playing as poorly as he's been playing. Who's on the trading block and center field? Nobody better than Peral. That's kind of what I was afraid of. Hmm. Look, what would I actually want? A big-time closer wouldn't be a terrible idea if we could get one we could trust. Our bullpen as a whole is not having a great season. Like, that's pretty much true up and down, that the bullpen's not having a great season. Vite isn't exceptional, but he's good enough. I don't really feel like replacing him does us any favors. A veteran fifth starter might make a big deal. Or a big time reliever. So let's look at the pitchers. Hmm. No. Uh-uh. Not with that control, my friend. You can figure your own shit out, but I'm not going to acquire you. Uh, that effect, that trading for John DeFranco effectively says I kiss Gunnels goodbye, and he hasn't been that great even when he has pitched. A guy like Jeff Trout would not be a bad acquisition. And I can basically get him for pretty much nothing. You can have Melvin Sanchez. I don't even care, dude. I can't get you to say throw in Joe Burton, can I? And... You're not that great. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and pull this trigger right now. And I'm going to trade Eric Martin because he's only ever had one very good season with us. And for the most part, he just hasn't been very good. Uh, I will look for starting pitchers with him, but I don't think I'm going to get much, but we can try it at least. Uh, yeah, Joey Vineyard seems like he'd be a great fit for this team. Yeah, fuck it. Give me Joey Vineyard. That then opens up a spot for Jeff Trout, who instantly becomes my new closer. Because I trust him uh, a lot more than pretty much anybody else. You get demoted to setup. You get demoted to regular middle relief. 
That's that. And then, do we go ahead and use Vineyard right now? I think putting him on the 40-man roster makes sense. I don't think keeping him in the majors makes sense. I'm going to send you to triple A. Because I'd like to see you work on your shit a little bit. But don't worry, you will be in the majors probably in the very near future. Okay, one more veteran starter. I think is just the ticket for us to make a real shot at a playoff run. DeFranco's too expensive. Mills is good, but not great. I'm definitely concerned about his lack of control. Doug Blag is not a starter, not with only two pitches. Jonathan Buckwalter, on the other hand, might be a nice addition to the team. What would you cost me? I'll give you Urbina for him. That just makes the team, it just makes us flat out better. And then you slot in as the fifth starter. Done. Um, any other trades I'd like to make? Mike Sheehan, you've been so good for us for so long. I don't know if I'm prepared to let you walk. But I'm also not prepared to pay you $7 million just to ride the pine. I might trade you in the offseason. Gunnels is grumpy. Um, as is his right. It's his right to be grumpy. Yeah, no, that's not going to happen. I'm not going to let you hit free agency that soon. Anybody else I'd like to trade? Um, yes, I will definitely sign you for four more years at just over a million each. I think that's very reasonable. Do some roster expansion here. Good. Trout looks better. A bit of a dip for some of our players, but that's not unreasonable. Plus, from tiny bit of a dip for him. Gunnels is getting better, which is just unfair, right? Like, my issue with Gunnels is that he is giving us a discount. Like, I bet he could easily get 40 million on the open market. I just don't think I can afford to pay him that much money. Um, I definitely can't afford to pay Sobolevsky to be hurt. Hey, Vineyard. Uh, welcome to the major leagues, my dude.
Very good. Very, very good. A picture of Buck Walter's talents for the price we got him for, I am very happy about. That's going to give us a nice bit of extra stability in the rotation. Holy shit, the Yankees are running away with the AL East this year. We're struggling a bit down the stretch here. I don't love that. You need to stop sucking, please. Uh, Tim Kennedy, you know what? I would rather have you than Vineyard right now. What the fuck happened to Vineyard? Yeah, bro, your stamina just vanished. That's not cool, dude. Uh, you're going back to the miners, then. I don't know what your deal is, but yikes. Um, that's fine. Andy Eldridge isn't having an amazing season. It's certainly not a bad season, but given what I'm paying for him, he's definitely not performing at the level I expected. Um... It's, I mean, it is what it is. You're not going to have amazing starters every season, but that does at least annoy me. Mm. Carl Brown. Oh, one second, please. I am back. Sorry about that. All right, friends. Um, okay. I feel pretty okay about our chances. Let's go ahead and advance up to roster expansion time. Okie dokie. Um, Wilcox is slightly getting worse, but that's not a huge deal. Um, Avila keeps getting better because of course he does. Rosrio is a tiny bit better. Peral's getting worse, man. I'm not super happy about that. Gunnels, quit getting better, damn it. You're making it much harder to decide about you. Um, who would we like to promote? I think bringing Heastad back is a smart idea. So here's my, here's one of my other dilemmas. We don't have a great backup infielder and they're not hard to find that's not the problem the problem is that if we lose Sheehan we're in a lot of trouble which is not great um okay oh somebody pointed out I'm gonna go ahead and have my AI reset my minor league system because there's a bunch of starters that are like buried in different places and I wanted to do that um, right. What else do we want to add to the roster? Another reliever, maybe? Get some Butch Mangum action happening? I think maybe that's okay. Just a couple of extra bullpen arms would take a bit of the, 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 the weight off of our team right now. Um, okay. I really don't know what to do about Gunnels. 
I want to bring him back very, very badly, but I don't know if I want to bring him back when he's going to decline eventually and just be stuck with a $30 million contract that I can't get rid of. Nice work, Mason. Um, because here's our, here's our big issue, right? I love Gunnels. I want Gunnels to have a very good career. I mean, we do have one secret weapon. Which is that this is exactly the kind of player that other teams will tend to underrate. Which means there may not be a bidding war for his services. I'm still going to try to get him to come back, but I either need him to give up on the four years, I need him to give up on the, um, the no trade clause. I've got to be able to get rid of him if I can't afford to keep him. That's not optional. I can't have him hamstringing us. Ooh, we won the division. Very nice. No, so it's not winning the division. That's clinching uh, a wild card spot. Why have I not locked up the division yet? Oh, I have. Okay, that's good. Uh, can we get our 100th win? That'd be cool. We can. And we did. Very nice. Please? Team option? No? Two-year deal? Yeah, he's really pissed off about it. Whatever. Uh, okay, let's sim up to the beginning of the playoffs. We might have to do some juggling with the roster. Okay. So our playoff roster is only 26 players. Wait, what? You're railing Mason Win off of my playoff roster. Why the fuck would I want you to do that? Like, this is the exact time of year you need the best defense you can possibly get your hands on. That's kind of a dumb thing to do. Um, do I trust Buck Walter more than Vita? I think I do. I'm going to swap you two. And I'm actually going to bump Swee over Eldridge. I think Swee's a little bit of a better pitcher. Um... Playoff Covarage. Uh, I don't care about y'all. Oh, I do need to go into commissioner mode super quick. I surprised I hadn't done this yet. Sorry. Um. And we're gonna do this. And we're gonna do this. And we're gonna do... That. I also need to change your logo. Uh... 
Uh, logos. That's fine, I don't really care that much. And then go ahead and lock those logos, please. There we go. And then I will switch back to the pirates and I will turn off commissioner mode. Okay, so we're placing the Arizona Diamondbacks. And we'll do sim number one, yikes. There goes Bin Sui turning in an excellent start. That is highly approved. Did someone get hurt? No, okay. Andy Eldridge turned in a pretty solid appearance. Maybe not a brilliant one, but a pretty solid one. And, ooh, this one looks like it went to extras. Oh, no, it didn't. We got a really good start out of Buck Walter. I know he didn't get the win, um, but we beat the Diamondbacks and we're in the LCS. It's been a while since we've made it there, hasn't it? Uh, no, we actually got there back in 2035. It hasn't been that long, I guess. Uh, let's go ahead and sim up to the next playoff round, please. Okay. The Phillies are pretty scary. I'm not going to lie. Um, it's the Battle of Pennsylvania. Uh, good job, Nate Brooks. I mean, 12 runs is 12 freaking runs, but good job nonetheless. Um, not ideal, Ben. Uh, it looks like... Mm, it looks like bad luck more than anything, really. Uh, come on. Don't do this to me, game. What? I mean, yeah, the Phillies are freaking scary as shit, but I thought we'd at least put up a better fight than this. That is some grade A bullshit. Did it happen again where the team just decided that offense was optional? I mean, Peral disappeared, but Peral wasn't that great even when he didn't disappear. Rosario definitely had a rough start. Yeah, and our pitching wasn't that great either. I mean, we got lit up in three of the five games. Alas, 
I mean, Philly won 114 games. Is there really all that much shame about losing a team that won 114 fucking games? I don't think so. I think it's hilarious that the Yankees got swept, though. So that's a nice consolation prize, I guess. And the Phillies won the World Series. Good for them. Okay. Three season goals. I made the playoffs. He's... A bit upset that I haven't. Like, he's pissed off me that I didn't sign Joe. This is what I was afraid of. Um. My third base coach retired. Um. Does anybody, like, despise people that are personable? No. Okay. Um, what about easygoing? We don't like people that are easygoing. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and promote Kevin Dixon to being our new third base coach. And then everyone else gets bumped up a level. Nope. Sudley check won't work for all tuna. Okay. What about Jonathan Johnston? Nope. All right, then. Uh, I guess we'll be hiring a new double-A manager, then. CJ Rutherford, I would like you to become my new double-A Altoona Curve manager. All right. Garrett Gunnels. Garrett fucking Gunnels. I can't keep telling my owner to get fucked. I can't keep doing that. At a certain point, it's going to bite me in the ass. And yes, there's other things I could be doing, right? I could be working to try to improve the team's stolen bases. I just don't think that's very helpful. I... Mm, I can't keep doing it. I can't. I cannot keep saying, I'm going to ignore you when you tell me to resign people. Let's talk about how the season went. Garrett Gunnels killed it again. Uh, he walked in, led the league in on base percentage, led the league in walks at 24 homers and 38 doubles. He is what he is at this point. What he is is fucking phenomenal. Andre Sevilla is like, oh, is baseball supposed to be hard? And then just utterly dominated. Like, damn, son. Salix Brown, his third consecutive season of five or more wins above replacement. He just is who he is. He hits, he hits for power, he gets on base, and he scores runs. Nick Rosario, a tiny bit of a setback, but still led the league in hits and at bats. 
Uh, Ramon Ramirez had an outstanding Major League debut, hitting almost 40 homers. Ricky Parole really struggled this year. I can't help but imagine that if Ricky Parole was at where he should be, that we would have had a much better team. So we've had two seasons with him. One in which he was a legit Rookie of the Year candidate, and one in which he was just a banjo-hitting center fielder, who admittedly played quite well. I think we're going to be held back or propped up by Peral one way or the other. And Wynn and Rure were both fine. Pitching-wise, great seasons out of the top three. Jeff Trout was a really great addition to this team. And then some other pitchers pitched not as well. So... Do we give Gunnels what he wants? Let's talk long-term salaries. If we give Gunnels what he wants, it will become immeasurably more difficult to keep Avila, Peral, and Rosario. That is a Definite concern. Can't you just give me a freaking team option, please? I'm not going to lock down Nate Brooks, but I will happily pay him that amount. Carl Brown, you just keep getting hurt. I'm going to non-tender you to save some money. Danny Sedano, you also keep getting hurt, but you're also way less money. Rure, I will give you your arbitration amount and not a penny more. Mike Sheehan, I will bring you back um, for now. I want you back, Gunnels. I want you back in the worst fucking way. But I can't give you four years. What if we did two years? Nope. Ah, uh, game. You are absolutely torturing me right now. Absolutely torturing me. If you take a two fucking year deal, I'd sign you right now. But I can't give him a four year deal. Not without team options. And here's why. Avila and Rosario. I can't afford it. I cannot afford to give you what you want. Uh, let's do $30. I want 100 fucking games. You should be begging me to buy tickets. No, we're still 25th in player payroll. 
Although, admittedly, that's without keeping Gunnels. Um, I don't care about Johnny Tompkins. Ugh. Why do you fucking do this to me, game? Why can't you just take, like, a two-year deal? I'll give you fucking 40 million over two years, but I cannot give you a four-year contract. I don't blame you for telling me that's what you want, but I do not have the budget to give you a $40 million contract. Or a, a four-year contract, rather. Especially a four-year contract with no trade clause. That means you want to stay in Pittsburgh. I want you to stay in Pittsburgh. But I can't do it. Not unless I completely got my scouting and player development budget. Hmm. Game. And here's the ultimate frustrating part about this. The easiest position to replace on a team is an outfielder. I could promote Esteban Salas and fix both the stolen base problem... And get another great hitter on the on the on the team. I could ship Les Brown to right, or just let him. I could make Salas learn right, and I think that's what I find the most frustrating is that Gunnels doesn't realize how little leverage he actually has with me. I will happily pay play Salas. Let him steal bases to its heart's content and let him hit for contact. It's going to piss off the owner, though, and that's the ultimate X factor. If I don't bring Gunnels back, am I going to get fired? Your mood is good, but that's only because I consistently refuse to accomplish your goals. Why can't you freaking retire and give me somebody who doesn't have a controlling fiscal personality? Open up your heart and your checkbook, and then I can't afford to have gunnels. But I will look forward to seeing what you folks see in the comment section of this video. But I don't see myself bringing back gunnels. Unless he accepts a qualifying offer, which we both know he won't. Like, you, my gentle viewer, and I, he's not going to take an $18 million qualifying offer. Um... As soon as free agency starts, I'm going to offer him a two-year deal. And I'm going to see if he might take it once he hits free agency. Because two years I can afford. Uh, I can definitely afford two years. But, that's going to be for next episode. Do share your thoughts in the comments down below. But until then, this has been F Guardian. Thank you for watching. And I bid you good day.